Jesus reveals the war in heaven. This is not a human war. This is a vast spiritual war few can comprehend. We get our first look at this vast spiritual war from the prophet Daniel in chapter 8. Here we learn this spirit will ascend all the way into heaven, trample some of the starry host, and eventually fight Jesus Christ. Jesus is the prince of princes, but this spirit that wants to be God will lose. Let's look at Daniel chapter 8 verses 9 to 12. We'll look at these verses and then we will look at what Jesus reveals. Verse 9. Out of one of them came another horn, which started small, but grew in power to the south and to the east and toward the beautiful land. The beautiful land is, of course, Israel and Jerusalem. Verse 10, it grew until it reached the host of the heavens, and it threw some of the starry host down to the earth and trampled on them. Verse 11, it set itself up to be as great as the commander of the army of the Lord. It took away the daily sacrifice on the Lord, and his sanctuary was thrown down. The only sacrifice that matters to God is the atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ. God knows this and the Antichrist knows this. Because of rebellion, the Lord's people and the daily sacrifice were given over to it. It prospered in everything it did and truth was thrown to the ground. Daniel was shocked and confused by all of this, and he asked the angel for more information. So in verses 23 to 25, the angel explains this to Daniel in even more detail. Verse 23, in the latter part of their reign, when the rebels have become completely wicked, a fierce looking king, a master of intrigue, will arise. This fierce king is a master of intrigue. He even says so. Quran 3:54, And they deceive, and Allah has deceived, and Allah is the best of the deceivers. He will become very strong, but not by his own power. He will cause astounding devastation, and will succeed in whatever he does. He will destroy those who are mighty, the holy people. He will cause deceit to prosper, and he will consider himself superior. When they feel secure, he will destroy many and take his stand against the prince of princes. Yet he will be destroyed, but not by human power. Jesus reveals verse 9 is a prophecy of Islam appearing. Islam starts small, but quickly moves to the south, and then the east to Persia, and finally conquering Jerusalem, destroying Christianity wherever it goes. It quickly controls a quarter of the world's population. Jesus reveals they had authority over a quarter of the earth's population, fulfilling the prophecy in Revelation 6, verse 8. Now let's look what Jesus reveals. In verse 10, this spirit will reach the host of the heavens and it is powerful enough to throw some of this starry host down to the earth and trample on them. Jesus reveals to understand this, we must look at the prophecy of the two witnesses in Revelation chapter 11. The prophecy of the two witnesses in Revelation 11 has both a physical and a spiritual fulfillment. We will look here at the spiritual fulfillment in this war in heaven. The two witnesses prophecy begins with Revelation 11 verse 3, and I will appoint my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for 1,260 days clothed in sackcloth. 
This prophecy could not be understood until Jesus revealed it. It has to do with the replacing of the temple with the abomination on the Temple Mount over Mount Moriah, the Dome of the Rock, which was set up in 688 AD. This is exactly 1,290 days slash years from when the abomination would be set up, according to the prophet Daniel. 1,260 years later, exactly in 1948, Israel was reborn. The setting up of the Dome of the Rock also gives precisely the 42 months until 1967 when Jerusalem was liberated and the holy city was no longer trampled. Jesus reveals the prophetic fulfillments are precise and perfectly accurate. We can understand the spiritual war to a greater degree in verse 4. They are the two olive trees and the two lampstands and they stand before the Lord of the earth. Who is the Lord of the earth? Well, this is the spirit that opposes Jesus Christ, that started small but grew in power. The little horn of Daniel 8, 9, Baal of 1 Kings 16, the morning star of Isaiah 14, the prince of demons of Matthew 12, the evil one of Matthew 13, the prince who is to come of Daniel 9:26. The great lion of Psalm 91, the beast of Revelation 13, the man of lawlessness in 2 Thessalonians, Belzebul in Matthew 12, and the strong man in Matthew 12. These are all describing this spirit who wants to be God, but is not. In verse 7, we learn what happens to these two witnesses. The beast that comes up from the abyss, the spiritual realm, is so angry that it attacks them and kills them. Now when they have finished their testimony, the beast that comes up from the abyss will attack them and overpower and kill them. The abyss is Sheol, the realm of the dead, the pit. At the fall of Babylon, we learn what happens to this spirit, Baal, the god of the Babylonians in Isaiah chapter 14 verses 12 to 15. How you have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to the earth. You who once laid low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of the assembly, on the utmost heights of Mount Zaphon. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. But you are brought down to the realm of the dead to the depths of the pit, Sheol, the abyss, where the beast emerges from. We see these two messengers all throughout the book of Daniel. For example, in chapter 4, when Nebuchadnezzar is told because of his pride he will be cast down and live like an animal for seven years, the decision is announced by messengers. The holy ones declare the verdict, so that the living may know the Most High is sovereign over all kingdoms on earth. These messengers, Michael and Gabriel. In Daniel chapter 10, verses 12 to 13, we get a sense again of this vast spiritual war. Then he, Gabriel, continued, Do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before God, your words were heard, and I have come in response to them. But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me for twenty-one days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. Verses 20 and 21 make clear it is only Michael and Gabriel. So he said, Do you know why I have come to you? Soon I will return to fight against the prince of Persia. When I go, the prince of Greece will come. But first I will tell you what is written in the book of truth. No one supports me against them except Michael, your prince. In verse 11, this spirit that wants to be God set itself up to be as great as the commander of the army of the Lord. Who is the commander of the army of the Lord? Jesus reveals that it is Jesus himself. We learn about this at the battle of Jericho in Joshua chapter 5. Now when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went up to him and asked, Are you for us or for our enemies? 
Neither, he replied, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, What message does my Lord have for his servant? The commander of the Lord's army replied, Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. How does this spirit ascend into heaven since it was in the abyss at the fall of Babylon? Well, we learn from Revelation that Satan has a key to open the abyss to let the beast out with his demons. Satan, the star that had fallen from the sky to the earth, is given a key to open the abyss. The fifth angel sounded his trumpet, and I saw a star that had fallen from the sky to the earth. The star was given the key to the shaft of the abyss. When he opened the abyss, smoke rose from it like the smoke from a gigantic furnace. The sun and sky were darkened by the smoke from the abyss. Paul tells us in 2 Thessalonians that when Jesus was on the earth, the man of lawlessness was held back. But once he was released from the abyss, he will go into God's temple and he will proclaim himself to be God. There is no temple on earth. He went into the sanctuary of heaven itself in front of God, proclaimed himself God, and started the war in heaven. Then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil or Satan who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. How can Michael fight against all these unclean spirits if the beast killed Michael? Well, we know from Daniel that Michael will arise. But after three and a half days, the breath of life from God entered them, and they stood on their feet, and terror struck those who saw them. Then they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, Come up here. And they went up to heaven in a cloud, while their enemies looked on. The unclean spirits were humiliated by Jesus when Jesus rose from the dead on the third day. The unclean spirits had no choice but to come together in a way to try to fight Jesus. How does this spirit become so strong? This spirit becomes strong from three different ways. First, Satan, the dragon, gives the beast his power and his throne and great authority. The ten kings give their power and authority to the beast. And then also, the beast forms a covenant with many in order to protect them where they will transfer their power to him. This super beast is the only chance they have to fight Jesus Christ. But they will lose and end up in the lake of fire when Jesus returns. None of the prophecy experts could figure this out because only the Lamb is worthy to reveal the meaning of Revelation and open the scroll. Many have tried on their own to understand this, but the Bible says these words are sealed until the last days. Only God can reveal them. Yes, these words are sealed until the very last days. No one could understand them until Jesus revealed them. Jesus reveals in the last days that this covenant with many involves the unclean spirits that give all their power to the prince of demons. This prophecy is given in the book of Daniel. But Jesus reveals the understanding comes from the prophet Isaiah. We know from the prophet Daniel in Daniel 9.27 that he will confirm the covenant with many for 1.7. In this passage, the reference to he is about the prince who is to come, this demonic ruler who was cast down into the abyss but would later re-emerge from the abyss from Sheol. Daniel clearly tells us that it is a firm covenant and that it is a strong covenant. The covenant with many is firm and unbroken. But what is this covenant? Some prophecy experts have guessed it's some kind of peace treaty with Israel that gets broken. 
but the Bible says it's a firm covenant, so that cannot be true. Jesus says to understand this, we have to look at the prophet Isaiah. Jesus, the Lamb of God, the only one worthy to open the scroll, reveals that the understanding of the Daniel prophecy comes from Isaiah chapter 28. Jesus reveals this prophecy is about the spiritual realm and the demonic forces that oppose the Son of God. Here is what Jesus reveals about the Daniel prophecy. God is speaking to the spiritual realm. Therefore, hear the word of the Lord, you scoffers, who rule this people in Jerusalem. Isaiah 28, 14. In verse 15, you can understand the covenant. You boast, we have entered into a covenant with death, with the realm of the dead, Sheol, we have made an agreement. When an overwhelming scourge sweeps by, it cannot touch us. For we have made a lie our refuge, and falsehood our hiding place. Verse 16 tells us what they are so afraid of, why they need this covenant. So this is what the Sovereign Lord says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone for a sure foundation. The one who relies on it will never be stricken with panic. We do not have to guess about who is this cornerstone or how much power does it have. Jesus himself tells us in Matthew 21. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures? The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people who will produce its fruit. Anyone who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces. Anyone on whom it falls will be crushed. This cornerstone is what they fear. The demonic world knows the power of the Son of God. They know Jesus will throw them in the lake of fire. They are willing to give a covenant to the Antichrist, the beast of Revelation, who claims to be able to protect them and fight Jesus Christ on the last day. But this spirit will lose and go into the lake of fire. God tells us even more in verse 17. I will make justice the measuring line and righteousness the plumb line. Hail will sweep away your refuge, the lie, and water will overflow your hiding place. Verse 18 tells them even though this is a strong covenant, it's not going to be enough to protect them from Jesus Christ. Your covenant with death will be annulled. Your agreement with the realm of the dead, Sheol, will not stand. When the overwhelming scourge sweeps by, you will be beaten down by it. Why do they have to have a covenant with Sheol? What is it about the realm of the dead? Baal, the prince of demons, Belzebul, was cast down into the abyss, and we know from Revelation, the beast emerges from the abyss. The beast which you saw once was, now is not, and yet will come up out of the abyss and go to its destruction. Verse 19 tells you how much these demonic spirits fear Jesus Christ. As often as it comes, it will carry you away. Morning after morning, by day and by night, it will sweep through. The understanding of this message will bring sheer terror. The prophecy of Daniel tells us something else about the Messiah. In the middle of the seven, he, this prince who is to come who opposes Jesus Christ, he will put an end to sacrifice and offering. This has nothing to do with temple sacrifice. This is the only sacrifice that matters to God, the atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ. How does all this end? Well, fortunately, the Bible tells us what happens in Revelation chapter 19, verse 20. But the beast was captured, and with it the false prophet who had performed the signs on its behalf. With these signs, he had deluded those who had received the mark of the beast and worshipped its image. The two of them were thrown alive into the fiery lake of burning sulfur. Yes, there is now little time left. Learn the truth of Jesus and the resurrection while you still can. 
Learn the resurrection truths while there is still time. The many truths of Jesus will show you the path to eternal life. There is no other way. More than 500 people saw the risen Jesus. 500 eyewitnesses. Jesus perfectly fulfilled 351 Old Testament prophecies. This is not by chance. It is an absolute mathematical certainty that Jesus is who he said he was, the risen Son of God, the only path. The prophet Daniel gives the crucifixion date to the very day, 600 years before it happened. Know and understand this, from the time the word goes out to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until the anointed one, the ruler, comes, there will be seven sevens and sixty-two sevens. After the sixty-two sevens, the anointed one will be put to death and will have nothing. The Bible tells us the decree to rebuild Jerusalem was given on March 5, 444 B.C. 62 plus 7 sevens is 483 years. This is exactly 173,880 days. March 5th, 444 BC to April 3rd, 33 AD is exactly 173,880 days. Jesus was crucified on Friday, April 3rd, 33 AD for your sins and my sins. NASA confirms there was a lunar eclipse over Jerusalem on Friday, April 3rd, 33 AD at 6 p.m. in the afternoon. This confirms another Bible prophecy. But the true God has even more wonderful things for us to know. Three days later, Jesus rose from the dead on Sunday, April 5th, 33 AD, just as he said he would. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. The prophet Isaiah told us this would happen 800 years before Jesus. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. Isaiah 53, 5. Rejoice! His resurrection means yours as well. Is there another way for eternal life? No. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in Him shall have eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. John 6, 40.